When I was back in Washington in the um, Clinton administration in the job of heading up the AIR program there, I was given the opportunity to administer what was then a brand new version of the Clean Air Act. And I quickly realized that my job was mostly going to be about replicating in the national arena things that we had already done in the state of California. Happy anniversary, Carb, please, um, because I celebrate you every day. It's been a, a a wonderful thing to see the state leadership here and how that has driven federal leadership and how it underpins it and it many times uh, prevents the federal government from going backwards and it's so it's a remarkable thing and congratulations to Mary for being as far as I'm concerned the best leader ever at the California Air Resources Board. I know it has a wonderful history but she's the best. But okay this is why I call Mary the, the Cheshire Cat, because we both are very kindred spirits. We have totally different ways of behaving. Uh, Mary is uh, very quiet, and, and, and in being quiet, she's one of those people like, remember that old E.F. Hutton thing? Everybody listens when she speaks. I'm the one that screams and yells all the time. And, and so when we did the, uh, the clean car negotiations with the car companies, Miri was wonderful because she let me sweat it out and try to get as much as I could, knowing full well that I was the cake, she was the frosting, right? So she could sit on the sidelines, see how far we got, and then she'd get whatever the hell she wanted. And so she, she just watched us sweat it out, baby. And it, so it was really fun to watch because the car companies were watching the same dynamic. You know, they, they were watching to see how she was looking, what she was saying, and I'm watching her going, did I get enough, did I get enough, did I get enough? And it was really fun to watch. And she, and she really did provide a tremendously strong foundation so that the federal government needed to push as far as it could, but we needed to make sure that we were working together in the end to get as much as was reasonable, but that we could drive forward, and pun intended. Well, the relationship between um, California, the Air Resources Board, and, uh, and EPA is one of uh, push and pull uh, all the time. Uh, we need each other. We need each other very much because um, much as we sometimes think of ourselves as an island out here, we are not. Uh, we need to have, we, we are a part of the whole of the United States. Uh, we're an important piece of the U.S. market for the car companies, but um, that's still 10%, and the U.S. as a whole is not as big a part of uh, the world uh, market for cars and trucks as it was once upon a time. So um, together, we have to uh, be trying to figure out how to optimize our our uh, resources. The part of the secret of this is that these programs are very technical, as the governor said. Uh, you know, um, policy leadership is important. Uh, good legal strategy is important. But without the foundation of the science and the technology, you don't actually get anything accomplished. Well, Gina, let's talk about about Dieselgate because that may be an example where uh, you know, you know the, the role California played in, in uncovering something that's had pretty profound impacts. And did California have a, an expertise in that case that the federal government did not have? I think that we, uh, the way that it worked is that is that we've always, at least in in my experience, is EPA and CARB work together to make sure that we both had significant expertise because it's not easy to cover and uncover what you want to to uh, uh, to focus on. And so in the case of, of Volkswagen, it was CARB, it was EPA, and frankly, it was Canada, too, all looking at doing testing together so that we could use all of our resources wisely enough to be able to figure out what was going on. And, and you know, I, I was thinking of that as you were talking, Mary, because you were talking about the resources we have, but frankly, in, in the case of Volkswagen, it was the resources that we leveraged that was key because uh, the partial settlement with Volkswagen ended up providing significant millions and millions of dollars across the country to states everywhere to build infrastructure. First to take and replace the pollution we had lost because 
of of the uh, the the uh, how do I put it? The cheating. That's a. I guess I can say that now. The dirty rotten cheats. No, I shouldn't say that. Uh, b because of the behavior of Volkswagen, but also just to build an infrastructure for electric vehicles that will allow us to advance you know, more technologies out there faster. As clever as we think we are, there are clever people on the other side trying to figure out a way around. So you constantly have to be moving forward. Learn, learn lessons. And there's a history of these uh, you know, skullduggery in the auto industry. How do we know it's not going to happen again? We don't. It will. <laughs> Not the same way, but um, there's a motivation. Whenever you have a regulation uh, that costs people money and you're in a competitive business environment, which the industry is, there will be people looking for ways to cut corners. I think one of the things we learned from the experience was that we were not putting enough of our assets on the enforcement side into looking at what was happening on the road and the experience of having had to try to compare what we were getting with the portable emissions monitors and the roadside monitoring versus what we were able to uncover in the laboratory revealed that there were ways that we hadn't even thought of before that that someone could cheat on the test and still uh, get through and then turn out uh, uh, turn around and find ways to be uh, polluting many times more 40 50 whatever times more than what they actually showed on the on the tests that were done in the laboratory i don't think there's any way to prevent that the good news is that most companies most of the time follow the rules because the consequences when you are caught as the volkswagen business showed are so enormous that most companies wouldn't risk it. But, um, one of the easiest examples that's often, um, I, think, I think, forgotten because we take it for granted now, um, but it was a big fight at the time, was getting the lead out of gasoline and out of other parts of the environment. Probably from a public health perspective, that would be counted as the most important thing that we did. And all of the areas that I would count as failures or I hate to think of them as failures, but let's just say room for improvement. How are we going to improve? Um, probably the biggest challenges still have to do with, uh, again, Governor sort of captured this at the beginning. It is the fact that we're still driving so much and that so much of our, not only our pollution emissions, but so much of our economy seems to be based on, you know, physically moving things around in large, heavy vehicles. That but we're in this age, there's a lot of excitement now about uh, connected, autonomous, electronic, shared vehicles, which is reducing the friction, reducing the costs, increasing the convenience of getting around in a, in a car, Gina McCarthy, where you know, VMT is go, can go up. There's sort of a utopian and a dystopian version of, of what that looks like. What does it look like to you? Well, you know, I, th I think at a time when we're doing an anniversary celebration, we ought to give ourselves the luxury of recognizing just how far we have come as well as how far we have to go. You know, because we've spent, you know, I've spent a lot of time working with California on issues. And one of the greatest gifts, I think, that California brings to the United States is the fact that when the federal government takes a break, they don't. You know, that, that's the issue. And right now, I would be totally embarrassed in every meeting I ever went to with anyone in any other country were it not for the visibility of states like California and cities in our businesses to keep moving forward. That, it, that speaks volumes about the resilience of the people in this country and the fact that we are a democracy. And no matter what happens in Washington, we can still cut our own path forward and that we're not going backwards. That's what California means to me. That's what I think it shows to the rest of the world. And so while we can talk about VMTs, look at the, the air quality improvements across the United States and in particular in California. Yes, it's very difficult now that the pollution is more insidious and less visible. But if you look at how far we've gone, including the, the Cal EPA and Matt, all the wonderful people there, and look at the, the, what you have done in the energy world, where you decoupled first, 
where you moved forward to, to take a stance on clean energy that changed the entire dynamic in, in the West. If you look at it, we are in the midst of a wonderful market transition in clean energy that even this administration can't figure out how to stop in Washington. <laughs> so let's celebrate a little bit. You know, you, you guys have kicked butt. Let's congratulate yourselves. And, and it's, it provides us a level of insulation that four years or maybe two uh, will, not, will not turn back. So you've done pretty good. I vividly remember going to the UN climate conferences uh, in the lead up to Copenhagen, where Californians were the rock stars. California you know, had that, that it, was, it was Schwarzenegger, it was Governor Schwarzenegger, it was, it was ARB, it was others, uh, even legislative delegations, and, and California was the bright spot, and particularly uh, Proposition 23, which is validated at, at the ballot box, that you know, so many people, Californians, voted for clean energy backing Prop 23 and, and, and basically validating AB 32 um, at, at, at the ballot box. I think I'd be negligent if I didn't mention the New England and Mid-Atlantic yep. states on regional <laughs> greenhouse gas okay. initiative. One of the reasons I wanted to mention this is that Reggie is actually tightening its cap and the vast majority of governors are Republicans who decided to do this. So we are not celebrating a Democratic success here. We are celebrating the success of everybody in the United States. Well, I know that there are some Republicans who don't consider uh, Governor Schwarzenegger a real Republican, uh, but he certainly considers himself a real Republican, and he has a lot of other Republican uh, friends out there as well. I, I think the remarkable thing about California's AIR program throughout all of the different administrations that I've lived here uh, under, and we have had other uh, Republican governors before, uh, before Governor Schwarzenegger, was that nobody ever tried to turn back uh, the work of the Air Resources Board because air pollution in this state has been consistently year in and year out on all the polls seen as the one big environmental concern that people share, that um, nobody likes air pollution, nobody thinks it's good for you, nobody thinks it's okay, and people tend to believe, and they've been proven right, that um, the technology exists, that you can have uh, clean air and also have uh, attractive vehicles and you can have uh, enough electricity to run all of the gizmos that you want to have and still have clean air. And Dina, you know, let's talk about the, the US EPA and, and how it's faring right now. And it's been through various cycles of... How, how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, is, is this time different? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> How different? Well, I mean, it's different because you can hear, you know, I'm not the only one expressing concern about the agency. Um, and, you know, you've got Bill Ruckel's house. You've got Bill Riley. Um, you've got uh, Christy Todd Whitman. I mean, it's both Republican and, and Democrats who have held the position as administrator, expressing serious concern about whether there is a commitment to the mission of the agency. Not a discussion about how to get there, but whether the agency and its mission is valued. And I know there are folks out there who work at US EPA, and I love them, and you should too. Uh, true or false, Gina, more VW executives may go to the big house for their role in Dieselgate. Yes, true. <laughs>